What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec, and this video is going to be about my methodology for when doing CTFs and finding a web application as a vulnerability that I have trouble exploiting, how I go about and explore that and figure out what I was doing wrong. Because when solving the machine nerder on Hack the Box, and we did some source code analysis and it looked like it was vulnerable to command injection. However, we had a lot of trouble exploiting it in that video and then moved on. In this, we're going to download the web app to a box, open up in a debugger, and see exactly what we did wrong and bypass or get RCE in the unintended way. It's nothing fancy, but I figure opening up Visual Studio Code, showing how all that works and setting breakpoints may be beneficial for a lot of people. So with that being said, let's jump in. So the first goal is to get the web app running on our local box because that opens up like standard out, debugging, and a bunch of other things where we can see what's going on. Also, another reason it could have failed is maybe the Python was running in a virtual environment and I wasn't using absolute paths. So running it on the local box is gonna take a lot of those unknowns out of it. So let's take a look at where this web app is. It looks like it's just in this SVC directory. And then let's take a look at how big it is. There is a 450 megabyte file in MISC, it looks like. And this is just node modules. So um, I'm gonna move this out and it looks like we need root. Thankfully, we copied a root key on this box. And the reason I can just remove these is because Node will automatically build it. Think of it like the Python requirements, except instead of going into a shared location, it just goes into um, the web, the app itself, right? So if we end up needing this Node module, we can always just rebuild it on a local machine or copy it at another time. So now that we have this, Let's do a tar cjvf web.tar.bz2 and permission denied. Let's just do this from root, I guess. So we want to rerun this command, paste, and there we go. So I'm just going to run on a simple HTTP server. We could SCP it, but this is the fastest way, I think. 160 port 8000 web tar bz2. Uh, fail to connect. There we go. It took a while for that Python to start up. And then I guess we should be kind and put the node modules back just in case anyone else was working on this box. But yeah. So there we have that. And now that we have the web app on our box, we can try to run it, right? So if I go CD web, Python 3, app.py, uh, we need to install a module. So pip3 install, HTML2 text. And for some reason, whenever I'm connected to the VPN, pip doesn't want to work. So I'm going to get off the VPN, install this, get back on. I think I did that fast enough when my SSH connection didn't die. That's magic. I probably should have ran it multiple times, but thankfully, that's the only dependency I have, right? So now I can go to localhost 5000 and we got this application running. However, if I try to do anything that requires a database, we get internal server error and we can see we can't connect to the MySQL server. Now we have two things we could do. We could stand up MySQL on a box, copy the database and run it. Or we can just be lazy and go to our SSH connection, do a SSH tunnel. And now when we go on this, it should connect to our SQL server, but it's still trying to go into this run MySQL sock. If you don't know um, how I just did that, if you Google SSH Konami code, you'll go to a SANS blog posting that talks about all that. If you want to get to that hidden prompt, if the very first thing you type on a line is squiggly C, um, then it drops you in that SSH prompt, and that's why I did dash L. But uh, we should look at exactly why this isn't working. So I'm going to go into web. Let's look at app.py. And we see localhost. Let's see. NC localhost 3306. We definitely connect to it, but for some reason, this doesn't. I wonder if we restart the web app. Nope. Uh, let's go back into app.py. I'm going to put an IP address here instead of localhost. 127.001. See what happens here. Probably have to restart the web app. 
there we go. So now we're logged in. Um, we have a second issue right now, and that is going to be, we don't have a login prompt. We, um, got a credential or access a illegitimate way, I believe, in the actual box, or maybe we got his password. Um, but the easiest way to get around this issue is if we just look at the app.py, we have database credentials, db user, db password. So I'm going to do mysql dash u db underscore user dash p. I'm going to type db password to log in, show databases, use app, show tables, select star from users. And this is a weird format, um, how the password is hashed. We could try to figure out how to hash this password, but I mean, we could just create a new user, right? Um, I said we could try to figure out how to hash the password because then we could reset Blue's password to be anything we want. I often like choosing the lazy route. And I don't know why it says I'm logged in. Let's do log out. It's home. Where's registration? Notes. Do I have a cookie or something here? Let's get rid of this session. Refresh. There we go. We got a register button. That was weird. Um, name, ipsec, root. Let's do alt shift A. There we go. Ipsec.rocks. Ipsec. And we'll put the password of password. So because now we registered an account, if we go back into this database, we have us. So we can now update Blue's password, or we can change our role to be VIP, which I guess is admin. I'm just going to... Oh, we can change our role. So um, let's do update users. This is update the table name. Set, uh, let's do role equals VIP, where name is equal to ipsec. Change one, match one. So now if I do a select star from users, ipsec is now a VIP user. So I can log in with ipsec password, and we are now completely in this web app. So the RCE we were working with was on this export note feature. And I'm going to kill this server because I want to go into Visual Studio Code because I just like this much better. Uh, we can open folder, nerd or web, this is where we want. And let's see, we want to go to, where is export note? Here we go. So in the actual video when we were doing this box, this is where we got to, saw a potential command execution, and then failed, and then moved on to something else. Uh, we can download that later. So right here, this is where we are trying to get command execution. So it's... Upon export note local, it runs the binary node. It does this miscellaneous md to pdf.js and then passes in the note. In this note, we can see, let's see, cursor fetch one. So it's coming from the database and it's doing a select star from notes where ID is equal to um, a string, which is going to be ID, and author is equal to our name, the session username, right? So we should know what note is. And if I create a note, let's see, let's add note. Uh, we should start this app. So I'm going to press F5 and do Python file. So now it's running in Visual Studio Code. And let's do please subscribe. And let's do curl 127.001 like this. Hopefully that's big enough for you. And here, sudo nc lvnp80. So if we get command execution, we should see it on this window. Uh, note must be 30 characters long. Let's put a bunch of comments in. Submit, awesome. So now if we export note, we should be able to export this to PDF. And we get an internal server error and now we can see what that error message is, which is handy.
sometimes. Uh, no such follow directory. That could be because we didn't have um, the node de dependency, so we can't run that binary. So it looks like maybe it erred before that and just didn't print anything. So here's where it's going to come in super handy that we're doing this in Visual Studio Code. I'm just going to click right here and set a breakpoint on this subprocess.run command, right? So I can do Control Shift R to refresh. Now we hit this breakpoint, we can see all the variables here. We can go in the debug console, we can just type command, which is this variable, or we could hold a mouse over it and see what it is. And we see it's running node, misc md to pdf, and then it's doing this dollar exclamation point, uh, some HTML, and then curl. And I actually, before doing this box, I have no idea what that is. So if we um, echo who am I like this, it's just going to print who am I. Now, if we do who am I like that, it still prints this. So if we wrap this and this, so maybe, I'm not sure if this is the correct word, but maybe it's like a string literal, which means never like process any character when you do it this way. So it looks like they tried to prevent command execution that way. They should have used something like Schlex or something like that to patch it. So if we added single quotes, we see we got command execution. So we have to escape the um, single quote. So let's click that little plus so we move on. And let's see. We can go back here. I don't know what key I hit. Was it F11? It was. And instead of export note, we want to edit our note. Where is the edit? Here we go. And we want to put a single quote. And I don't think we need the semicolons. We just want command execution. So this is what we have now. If I submit this, okay, we still have a breakpoint set, refresh, and if we look back at command, uh-oh, um, we can see it converted it to an HTML entity. So this still isn't going to work. Uh, we can, even in this debug console, do the subprocess run. We see it's completed, and... If we look at our window, let's see, is it here? We don't have that curl coming back to us. So this is also where going in Visual Studio is handy because right now we don't know if we can bypass this HTML entity. But since we have access to the code, I can just set command equal to whatever I want. So um, if I wanted to make sure this would have worked, I can just set command equal to curl 127.001 like this. And if I look at command, that's what it said as. And if we do this subprocess.run, it's not telling us it's completed. And it says deadlock because this is taking longer to run. And we got it back. So all that did was tell us if we can bypass um, the HTML entity encoding, we probably have RCE. And this is another reason it's handy to do this in a debugger, because if that didn't work, then we know we may just want to move on, right? Because we're out of ideas at that point. So now that we know that, let's go over into Burp Suite and see what happens if we... I did Burp Suite too early, I guess. So we want to see if the um, HTML ND is on the user side. So if I submit, we have a lot of HTML encoding. I do control shift U and we can see that percent or whatever 39. I'm going to just edit it out. And I don't think I need the semicolons. So let's just try this. We could probably even get rid of the P's for paragraph. So 
Let's forward this in. And then we can run this again, right? So um, this is the export note. We hit the breakpoint. I'm going to run command again. And we see it is now in single quotes. So we have escaped the string literal or whatever this was doing. So let's make sure our netcat is running. We can run it. And we get another hit. So now we have found the RCE path, or the unintended RCE path, I guess I should say. So hope you guys found this beneficial and start playing with Visual Studio Code and doing things like that. So take care, guys, and I'll see you all next time.